Hey everybody, thank you for watching D News today. As usual, my name is Trace and I'm here with my friend Dr. Natalie Hinkle, who is a planetary astrophysicist, which I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds fancy. It means that I look at outer space and I look at stars um, in general. I look at the properties of those stars, but I also look at the planets around those stars. And I try to make a connection between the stars and the planets. Something I was reading about your research is that not all stars are what we thought? Well, so not all stars are exactly the same. Okay. So you have some stars that you know can be big and they're really bright, and you have other stars that are sort of smaller, smaller than our sun, and then you have our sun, which is actually pretty average, run of the mill. So when you're looking at stars far, far away, then how do you determine what it's made of? So when you have a star, you have elements that are sort of in the outside of the, of the star. And so this light comes out from the inside and it's making way, its way through and it's on this little path. But at some point it encounters one of these elements like carbon or oxygen and the light hits it and it gets absorbed by this element. So by the time that we see the light, it's not flat anymore. It has all these like little dips in it. Mm -hmm. And the dips are when it ran into one of these uh, elements. You can figure out exactly what element must have been in this in the star based on where the dips are and how much of that element based on how wide or how fat the dips are. Very cool. And yeah, that's called spectroscopy. Wow, so. okay, so different elements are gonna cause different kind of signatures in the light. Exactly. So it's sort of like a stellar archaeology. You can kind of go backwards in time and figure out how everything was, all the stuff that came in to get the star the way that the star is now. So you've created a database of over 3,000 stars. You can look it up online if you're curious. It's called Hypatia? Yes. So Hypatia was uh, one of the first female astronomers. She was alive around 400 AD. Uh, she was really awesome, big feminist, uh, even at that time which was cool. So Hypatia is uh, an accumulation of other people's data. Like you said, it's 3,000 stars and we have 50 different elements. And it's the, the biggest known catalog of stellar abundances. I have looked at the stars near to us and one thing that we just sort of expected was that all the stars would just be sort of jumbled up. And this is for a lot of reasons, you know, we're moving in the galaxy and, um, and stars move around on their, on their own. So we didn't expect to see any big patterns when we we're looking at all these different elements. But one thing we found, which was very surprising, so surprising that I had to ask somebody else to verify my work, was that it was not really mixed up, it was more layered. And so we found that there were certain kinds of stars with different kinds of elements, all sort of, um, it's called like near the galactic plane, so all in the sort of like one level. So it, it's in my head I'm picturing it kind of like layers of dirt, like depending on where you are you could determine what types of stars are around, is that right? Or? Sort of. We think actually more, it might be sort of like um, pie. Mm, where yum. <laughs> So uh, tasty stuff in the middle and then crust on the top and the bottom because we found that they were kind of the similar top and the bottom. What other stuff do you do? So I look at uh, transiting exoplanets. Ooh. So this is sort of the more planetary side of the planetary astrophysicist. So when you say transit, you mean the planet passes between uh, the star and us. Correct. When it transit, it goes through the atmosphere and you can actually see what would be in the upper atmosphere. But right now there haven't been that many planets where they actually transit. So it's actually really, really interesting to find more that do. How many times do you have to be watching? Because that could only happen, you know, once a year. But, but that's okay, because we get so much data that we're actually able to narrow it down to a few hours of when this could be transiting, which is really exciting. That's messed up. No, it's really cool. Because it's cloudy then we're really sad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming in. Uh, you, people can come find you on Twitter, correct? Yes, you can find me at Natalie underscore Hinkle. And if you have science questions, make sure you ask because she's real smart. Uh, you can also find your podcast, right? Yes, I have a podcast. It's called the Science Bar Podcast. It is me, a geologist, and two hilarious comedians where we talk about recent science news over a couple of drinks. It's, it's pretty good. I like it. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any questions down in the comments. 